We had a hellacious winter storm blow through and you can see what it did to the turbine. I'm going to have to pull that down and fix it or figure something else out uh, because it literally, the winds were so high, it literally lifted that turbine off of the mast and now it's sitting sort of cockeyed. I don't know if you can see that in the video. It's not sitting down on the mast anymore. It's stuck in its position. When it turns, it's making a god awful squeak and as you can see, it bent the fuselage pretty badly. Um, it also was really tearing up buzz. It broke this weld right here. And as you can see, I'm getting separation on buzz's, uh, <clears throat> framework here. So this has got to come down. We're going to have to find another situation for it. Um, you know, if that had not jumped the mast, I think we would have been okay. But when it jumped the mast, I think it caught the wind and just held and kept working it in one direction uh until it finally broke the mass there um i was not here during that day i was about 30 miles away in that direction and there was absolutely no wind over there but robert had wind here from the time we woke up and i left early in the morning uh, until i got back here about four o'clock in the afternoon and the winds were still howling but there was no wind over there 30 miles away we had probably gusts of 50 or something like that. The turbine did its work. It tilted, but then it tilted. I guess a gust of wind picked it up and lifted it clean off of the top of the mast. And now it's just sort of hanging there. It won't, won't spin. It won't spin in the wind. I mean, the blades will turn. But uh, we got to get this thing down because it tore up buzz. Um... I wondered about this when I, you know, when I installed this on Buzz. I knew, I figured Buzz's framework could handle it, but I wasn't counting on something like this, where the turbine lifted up and stayed in one place and didn't spin and put the relief on the mast. So we can't take a chance of destroying Buzz. Buzz is our source of electricity here. Uh, so. And here I thought the main problem uh, Buzz might present was with that was with that you know array that solar panel on the side so robber i wasn't here robber did her best she got some ratchet straps and tried to tie that down and hold it together until i got home but uh yeah we've got to make some repairs to buzz we got to get this mass down and then we need to find a ground mount for it because i'm not going to have this i have a hundred feet of that cable that i can run to buzz not crazy about it having this far away, but um, I think, and the cold frame's done for the season, um, I've got to find a place to put that engine, that old engine out of Dyna 2, and that's going to stay there at least temporarily because of its proximity to the well. Uh, so I am thinking there's or the original Dyna, and there's the trailer, but uh, I, and there's the shouse, 
and as you can see, I mean, the wind just shredded everything here. We've got to do some cleanup. But uh, I'm thinking if I've got enough cord for it, putting it right about here between the well and Wi-Fi station and this cold frame. Yeah, like right about here. I dig a deep enough hole to set that mass temporarily. <clears throat> I don't need it as high as it is. <clears throat> um, because we're up on a hill here. I just need to make sure that it's far, far enough away from other structures here so that it will operate properly. So we don't get improper windfall and it not, not give us what we need. So today at least we'll be getting that down and maybe we'll get it set in the ground over here. I'm not going to go to a lot of trouble uh, because that thing is torn up and I need to do some repairs to it. And I think I might just leave it to bury it deeply enough in the ground where it's up out of the way of vehicles and you know backhoes and things like that so that uh, it doesn't get damaged but uh, then we'll run that so cord over to buzz anyway that's our project for today temperature is about uh, going on 40 degrees we had an overnight low of about 30 i think and uh, snow on the ground we had about i don't know four inches of snow but with the wind, we had drifts over against the shouse of several feet. So, our project for today. Man, these batteries have served us well over the past few years. They were used batteries to begin with. And, uh, I mean, they've they've done their job. I mean, they're getting tired. They're tired. But, uh, you know, we can never sell them because they're just too far down. You know, they're still usable to a point. Maybe these have been used for a 48-volt system, but I think now we might convert just to a 12-volt system and uh, give some power to the, you know, the new uh, travel trailer we got over there. But these Lifeline batteries have been great batteries. Today is the day we switch out our old batteries for newer ones and prep uh, Buzz here for the season. We've already uh, reset the angle of the panels for fall, bring them a little lower, and pull out uh, the old batteries. I'm getting ready to install some new batteries, but before we do, I want to insulate this. This is just metal that's at the bottom of the original trailer. And uh, on top of this, we had some like a rubberized um, shelf paper, you know, if you will. And uh, we're going to put that back, but also, you know, cold winter's coming, and I want to insulate these batteries as best I can from the cold. So that being metal and underneath it nothing but sky and I get cold, uh, I think I'm going to put a piece of insulation in here. So I have some leftover rigid foam insulation. I think it's about an inch and a half thick left over from when we built the cold frame. And uh, it's big enough to cut a hexagon shape out of to fit right down in that cavity where the new batteries will go. So that's what we'll do. 
And when you put a thousand pounds of batteries on here, it's going to compress a little bit, but uh, at least it'll keep it up off that cold metal floor of the trailer. I'll put that black uh, rubberized shelf stuff down. You look fine. No. <laughs> smooth it down. Does okay. it smooth down? A little. Yes. Okay. What do you want to say? So we've got the new batteries installed and I had to tweak them a little bit, you know, turn them sideways a bit so that the old uh, battery cables would fit. Um, you'll notice some of them are flat and some of them are sticking up like this. The important thing is, is that all of these cables are the same length. That's the important thing, whether they stick up or lay down. I was thinking I needed to torque these, but when I tried to torque them, of course, these lead posts would just distort. So, you know, I got them as tight as I could and I'm just going to leave them. Right now, the charge controller up here is finding out what's here with the batteries. You see the camera reflection. Um, but it's bulk charging the batteries. The next step here is to install our watering system because the old batteries were uh, absorbent glass mat, AGM, or what they call uh, dry batteries, no maintenance batteries. These are going to require some maintenance. And so, you know, the, the easiest way we thought to do that would be to um, install a watering system with hoses that just waters all of these at the same time. Well, it appears that this watering kit came with everything needed uh, to do the job, except the little clear hose that runs in between these, these things. You've got this pumping bulb and hose that hooks into, I believe, the end of this right here, right there. And uh, then this hose is distributed around the batteries. These each have a valve in it that uh, shuts off automatically when the distilled water has reached the proper height so you can't overfill the battery. You shouldn't uh, fill the batteries until after they're charged. And then check them with something like this, a, hy a hydrometer, to make sure that the specific gravity of your battery fluid is correct so you get proper charging and performance out of the batteries. Mm, you monitor this regularly. This is a pretty dry climate, so I think uh, to start, I'll monitor this every couple of weeks and then probably just go to a month, m once a month after that. Unlike E-Chip, I read the directions and we did have enough tube. The black tube that came with it is what you're supposed to use. And so we cut it up and divided it into little parts like such. Right here is where you connect the little hand pump, which goes into the distilled water jug, splits off this way, goes on around, here, splits off, fills those, goes on around, and keeps on going on around till it's right here, and then it stops. And by the way, uh, this watering system is made by a company called Flow Right. I don't know if you can see that. But they're not cheap for, you know, what you get here. It's just a bunch of plastic parts, but uh, helpful to do all your batteries at once. And Trojan, the manufacturer of these batteries, has a system like this. It just so happens to be made by Flowrite. And the Flowrite system was, a, I mean, like 50 or 60% of what the Trojan brand is. And since it's made by Flowrite anyway, if you're going to order a system like this, you might as well order it directly from Flowrite instead of Trojan. Okay, so reinstalling the uh, tempered battery temperature sensor that goes to the charge controller. There is also a battery temperature sensor that uh, that goes to the inverter. And it's nice to have these on here because they help manage the batteries. The batteries get too hot, it'll cut off a charge and things like that uh, to uh, to keep them safe. Thing looked like it was originally attached with double-sided tape of some kind. So we got got some old carpet tape here. We'll just peel this off and best I can like that okay there we go just stuck on there with some double-sided tape two sensors got it fairly close to a terminal because uh, that's sometimes generates quite a bit of heat so that'll be good okay so the batteries are the batteries are fully charged now so I've got some distilled water here I got the pump hooked up pumping it through there it goes 
Ooh, I can hear it going. <laughs> 